Army will shrink in the, in the course of 2023. And then weren't that different uh, compared to many others when it comes to the inflation, because inflation is just... But restoring price stability when inflation is high can require Hello. measures that are not popular uh, today, in the I'm short Christopher term. Crystal, and this is uh, Financial Stockholm. Welcome. Uh, today is Thursday, January 19th, 2023. And uh, these are uh, our views, what we're seeing here in the market uh, and uh, what you could expect from Scandinavia. So um, today uh, we, uh, we start, um, we're starting up the earnings season and uh, tomorrow will be uh, really kind of one of our bellwethers where uh, one of the companies reporting is, is more of a holding company of industrials and uh, that's Investor AB. Uh, and that's going to be closely watched because it really gives you a good sentiment for how our industrials are performing. Um, of course, people will be looking at the margins, cost. Uh, one of the key people who will be looking will be Eric Thedin and uh, or Thedin, uh, excuse my pronunciation, I'm not sure on how he's pronouncing it, but it should be Thedin. Um, and uh, he's the new head of the Riks Bank after Stefan Ingves, 17 years, I uh, stepped away. And uh, the key will be watching the inflation and the potential for the, uh, the Swedish economy. Um, so we, we still haven't seen this payment of the electricity uh, support or uh, repricing, so to speak, uh, that consumers will be receiving. So um, we'll be watching that. Uh, but also at the same time tomorrow, the Riksbank will be having a presentation from a business region. Uh, we have one of the largest uh, freshwater lakes here in Europe and um, it's called the Mallardem, uh, the region. And uh, so it's Vesta Gotland uh, and the companies within that region will be presenting to the Riksbank to say what the business climate is and how things are going. Uh, and so we will have a first deputy. Uh, she will be uh, present and listening to what they are saying in, uh, for the Vestmanland uh, and uh, what the report will be. Now, uh, Norway uh, left their rates unchanged and uh, so that's, that's a positive sign for us here in the market because we're hoping, uh, and this is echoed by what we got from the IMF yesterday down at the uh, World Economic Forum, that inflation looks to have peaked out. Now, um, how much of that is weighed by the uh, cost of electricity versus say the food cost is not clear. Most of the food costs would be tied to the uh, fertilizer cost. And that, of course, was tied to what was going on with the Ukraine and the beginning of the war. Um, and I think for better insight there, you can look at the harmonized cost index uh, and pricing that's provided by the, um, the ECB. Uh, so you can, you can look at that page and uh, get the indications. But all of these regions within Europe are much, much higher than the expected inflation and the inflation target of 2%. So... The idea that uh, we're out of the woods is not there. Um, if you want to be an early investor and start uh, trying to get ahead of the trend, sure, uh, you can do that. But the fundamentals right now are still not there. Um, we're, we're benefiting from a very warm winter. And um, there's, uh, there are costs associated with that, like uh, flooding, uh, because we've had a tremendous, we would have had a very, very snowy winter had it been colder. Um, but I think uh, many people will trade off because you'll have less people dying from the cold than you would have had. And uh, so if you want statistics there, you can of course go to somebody like uh, Bjorn uh, Lomborg. He's uh, Swedish uh, or Danish, and, but he's living in Sweden and uh, he's part of this Copenhagen project. So you can get the statistics there. Um, and then, but in Sweden, we're of course very focused on what's going on in Ukraine and the tragedy there. Uh, we'll be sending over our archer system which is a uh, missile guidance, uh, which is, uh, uh, I'm not so familiar with the product does or how it works or how to compare it to something like a HIMAR or, uh, or a Patriot um, or you know, what, the, what the length is or in terms of the tactical range you can use for it. Um, but Sweden will be sending these. And, uh, uh, and then we're also sending uh, troop transport vehicles. Uh, so this will be a, a next step for Sweden now, we're, of course, being held up on our NATO application by Turkey. Um, there's some uh, criticism of Erdogan that's happened in front of the embassy here in Sweden. Uh, but the real issue has been more about the F-16s, and that's on the United States part. Uh, and now Germany is saying to the United States, we're not going to send the Leopard tanks unless you're sending the Abrams tanks. 
um, they don't want to be the primary retaliation point for Putin, which also brings us back to Sweden and the NATO application, because the position that Sweden and Finland have held with uh, Russia has been a muted position. But now in entering into NATO, we become a primary focus position. So uh, there's a question there about what happens and what the next step is for Sweden with the, um, the sending of the munitions and the entrance into the war, so to speak, by supporting it. There are some people saying it's not a big deal and won't change the, uh, the focus that Putin has for us, um, but I, 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 I'm not sure. I'm not Putin, but I, um, I'm sure he's uh, got us in a sharp focus, uh, especially if we're going to be receiving missile silos to uh, target uh, towards Russia. So um, that's, uh, that's a question. But uh, if we also look at what else is going on, we have the Swedish society. We had no bombs last night, so that's great. We did have shootings. Uh, we had shootings earlier in the week, and we did have another shooting last night. Um, but the, uh, the key here is uh, really more about the, uh, the inflation. So there's, uh, there's more of a kind of a sigh of relief uh, as a result of the uh, inflation may have peaked. And some of that comes from the US uh, PPI data and uh, uh, retail sales. Uh, you saw a slowing. Uh, so there's an increased fear of recession. Uh, and maybe this is why the European markets have been handling it better than the United States market, because you see a um, already that we've entered into the recession. So we're perhaps further along in this. And if you're looking at the oil pricing, you see that we enter into now when the pricing uh, will be affected by the production. So the production cuts are coming. And if we don't see increase in the cost after this, uh, it shows you the global decline in the GDP, which is, I think, the right way to look at when the OPEC is reducing and increasing production. They're doing this based off of economists, not necessarily for political, which is how a lot of the press has been portraying them. Uh, so I think uh, the, the fear here is that if you see a decline in the oil, you will be looking at a recession and further recession. And then we still wonder how the uh, logistic issue will be handled or has been handled. So uh, right now it's about the cost and the pricing and uh, whether we've entered into a, a firm recession or not, or whether we might soon be pulling out of it. Um, and then the next factor in the market, which of course really makes it very difficult to uh, figure out is the crazy politics. Uh, and so you have this virus spreading worldwide um, uh, New Zealand, uh, the prime minister, she's resigning ahead of uh, the elections. Uh, she'll be out of office by, I think, February 7th. And um, the, uh, you have uh, content going on at the uh, World Economic Forum. Uh, they have uh, politicians from both sides in the United States. They have politicians from the rest of the world and all over attending. Um, you have business sentiment uh, as somewhat negative. You have surveys here in Sweden showing that the business sentiment is negative. Uh, and hoping for a turn uh, and positive uh, gains and perhaps a uh, change in the market. But generally right now, um, the, uh, the crazy politics is out there. Uh, and, I, and I think on that factor, one of the biggest things that would happen in the crazy politics would be something with, uh, with the United States, of course, being the largest market and having the largest exposure for investors. And that would be what would happen if say something like Biden would be impeached, how could he be impeached if you only have Republicans in charge of the uh, House of Representatives. But right now you're seeing the press turn against him because of his handling of documents, uh, which were almost identical to the handling that Donald Trump had. Uh, and uh, the, but the treatment is the, the key here because the press is now turning on Biden, which shows you that there may be room for an impeachment. Now, if there would be an impeachment, I don't think the market would take it negatively. I think they would take this as a positive because this would be a way to maneuver so that Donald Trump is no longer a candidate for the presidency either. And, uh, and then you completely take that out of the, the market and then you open it up for other candidates, which would be more amenable to the market. So that's, uh, that's the crazy politics, but I think it's a non-event, uh, but it, it would be generally a positive. Um, so it's, a, it's nothing that I'm worried about. Uh, and I think uh, really probably something better to look at would be the crypto. Uh, there is a discussion in the Wall Street Journal today about how crypto affected Africa and how crypto was to be used to handle inflation and uh, how you could hedge yourself against the political corruptness 
um, the uh, inflation issues within the uh, countries in Africa and, uh, and eliminating the currency risk by having yourself in a cryptocurrency, which you could then use to buy the goods instead of their own currencies. Um, but with the SBF failure, uh, that has really uh, been uh, has taken the crypto out. Now you do see a return to the asset class or a valuation return to the asset class. Uh, but some of this is uh, because you, you still see uh, uh, bankruptcies coming and being uh, filed just about every day. Uh, but one of the key things that happened over the past two weeks has been when you had the FAA shut down the airlines in the United States, and then you had a similar event occurring in uh, Canada, and you'd previously had a similar event occurring in the Philippines, there are those speculating that these would be ransomware uh, that uh, you needed to pay off with currency that was Bitcoin. And so if you look at the Tether trades and you look at the Bitcoin trades, that would explain why the Bitcoin spiked 20% over the weekend or after the weekend, because it was used to pay off ransomware. I, I see that all as uh, speculation. And personally, I would still stay away from the... Uh, the uh, cryptocurrencies because they act no differently than fiat currencies. And uh, you really wanna have a valuation behind it. So um, without the asset class backing, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't look at any of the, um, the currencies that are cryptos. Uh, but what I would point out is we do have a video discussing technical trading. So when I mentioned the, uh, the investor AB, uh, we, there is a video link that you can use to see what our uh, uh, colleague, Anders Hogland, he has his own trading and uh, trading advisory set up. Uh, he goes through different scenarios. Uh, you can look and see what he's saying about investor and uh, where he thinks it might be a good position or not. And you could contact him, you could reach out and uh, get investment advice from him. And you can look at the video to see where he thinks the trading points are. Uh, and I think that could be helpful because you can always make money in the market, whether you're long or you're short. If you're playing options, derivatives, or if you're going uh, tactical or strategic, there's money to be made in the market. So with that, I uh, wish you a, a lot of success and hope you have a great rest of the day. Thank you very much.